welcome to another video from Ignang. Today we're going to be discussing probably my, one of my least favorite subjects and I've been trying to avoid this for the longest time because I do not like this game mode whatsoever. But we're going to be discussing the underground uh, maze, the, the underground cave, um, to try to help you guys know how to do that in the most efficient way possible. Now before we get into that, we've got to get into our usual semantics. Uh, we do have a Discord open uh, that the link will be down in the description below. You are more than welcome to join it. It's a growing community. It's there as a, it's a community tool and asset. And therefore, there's no bashing, no bullying, no generally being an asshole, or else you will be uh, kicked and banned from that room. Now, as we start to get more subscribers and followers, uh, eventually YouTube will start monetizing my content. And when they do... What I will be doing is the first three months of any monetization gain uh, from YouTube will be given away in a bi-weekly raffle to whoever is subscribed and in the Discord. After that, it will be 25% of a monthly that will be done on a uh, monthly basis. So invite your friends, get them to subscribe, come check out our Discord, and we'll hope to see you there. So... There's, there's a couple different ways and tactics in doing uh, the underground maze. So first off would be the absolute free to play way to where you're not buying the healing potions each um, week and such like that. So, and this applies really with, with both uh, whether you're buying the healing potions or not, but there's one key difference as far as how you're getting um, obviously more health in your hands to be able to continue on so what i always do is the very first thing you always want to choose um the shortest path through so it's for shooters now what i do is the ants that i don't have skilled up like they're level one or they're level 50 and don't have any skills open uh, i will go ahead and use those first to, to get through the easier levels and plus, you're not going to be wasting any of your healing potions on that or anything like that. So, for instance, like for my shooters, I don't use my Predator. I don't use my Banshee. I don't use my Ass General. Now, it is key to understand that when you're putting them into these lineups, um, the range of them still counts. So, it's exactly like setting up a normal PvE or PvP um, march. So, the, you need to... Treated as such to where the the range damage of the skills on the ants does fall in line and count. So I'll just go ahead, go through that. Do the same thing on cares. Anything that I don't use um, is really low level, like my new world general. I don't have any skills open on it. I don't use um, carriers. So, um, so I'll go ahead and do the Blood Giant. Um, my Enigmatic Tailor really doesn't have any skills on it either, but for my actual damage ants, um, I have my Shikri and my Golden Vim, so I kind of want to save those. So this one's kind of going to be in a bad spot, but I'll just go ahead and use it anyway. So when you get to these, um, this... It, this game mode works a little bit differently than most. Because if you, if you see... Oh, it's not going to let me get past this. Okay, so I'll explain this first. So what I do is I usually go through and I get um, defensive or healing aspects rather than attack or anything else like that. Until you get into the later levels where it has the Assault Plunder, uh, which I'll explain why you'd want to pick up uh, that one. But for these earlier ones, I do the defense. Um, just one increases the healing ratio effect by 3%. And as you can see, you can go through and look at your available buffs. So like right now, um, be a damage reduction of 1%, heals itself per round with the healing ratio of 1% for the front line. So this one then increases that by 3%. Now it's not a flat 3%, it's a, it's a ratio of what your initial buff already is. So if it's 10%, you're only getting, you know, a little under a third of that. So you'd only be getting like 
percent but every little bit helps um now if you look at it every time you click on one of these it says a recommended power and that's obviously your typical march power and whether you're able to go through without losing hearts does have a factor um so you want to kind of look in at that when you go through to do the underground maze now on top of that you're going to see that each one of them has a set uh, skill that it is or it has a weakness to which especially when you get into the later rounds you want to kind of uh, look at that i don't have any silence carriers so for me it wouldn't matter but uh you can look at like if it was a, a uh, shooter and for um instance you could use like rate master um something like that that has a silent skill on it to be able to go ahead and take that out as far i think the uh one of the pay to win ants for cares has silent something i want to say it's the uh the one with the big fat butt pm or whatever um so yeah you, you want to kind of look at that so like this one it doesn't have a weakness so we'll go ahead go over to this use the ones that i don't use and uh this one has a damage reduction one so typically what i would do is when you get into the later rounds mm -hmm. i would be using something like shield warden um, because shield warden has a damage reduction so that would be a weakness for it so that would give me a little better chance of being able to win that round but since we're in the lower rounds and i still have ants that don't have skills unlocked and wouldn't do me any good anyway i'll just go ahead and continue that way see and then we'll just keep on going but anyway we'll go out of that and discuss about the healing so when you're healing completely free to play you usually are going to end up needing to directly select whatever troop type of ants you don't have a lot of um so for me that would be carriers so like on carrier days i'd be trying to probably replenish my carriers more than anything else um possibly my guardians whichever ones tend to die first the neutral ones there are so many neutral ants in the game that you really never have to worry about trying to heal any of those um, and you'll end up using a lot of those later on now if you are paying for your potions each week what i do is i kind of offset what ants i want to die and so what i mean is like say if it's a if it's a shooter uh line um i would put something like i put just my lathe in there because i'm gonna want to be able to heal that later on so that what i do is you get uh what is it five potions that you can buy a week so if you heal the lathe once obviously you're not gonna be able to heal that again so when you go through and your lathe dies again you sweep switch over to your reap master go through with that one and then that way when you go to heal you have you still have the damage of your ants and then when you go to do the special revive mm -hmm. which you want to do the special revive after you've already used up your potions because that allows you to actually get the ants back that you've already healed you can still get the ants back that um you had healed and in um the discord we have a chart that goes through with all of the different weaknesses um on that are on the ants so that will be something that can help you out so i'll just continue on with the healing um which actually they did a pretty good job of the recommendation because that's usually pretty on point but i wouldn't really go with any any of the buffs that are attack um because you really don't need that like i said later on the only when you get like above floor 20 i think it starts giving you um assault plunder uh which is what will raise your overall recommended power which when you start getting up there i mean there's some of them that are like five to six million etc cetera, etc cetera, that you might want to do that like on for some weaker marches so that one's generic do the same thing grab the ones that i don't use mm -hmm. um 
trying to get to where I could show you. For, okay, so that one took two hits. I probably should have paid attention to the weakness, but I am only using level one, so it doesn't really matter. I would never suggest using the quick deploy because the quick deploy tends just to pick the first three and just throw them in there of whatever you got. See, so, you know, there, something died. Okay, so this one, go with the defense stack. And I'll, I'll keep going with the video until I get to another one so you can um, kind of start seeing where to differentiate. Okay, so for here, now that I'm through with my low level ones, since I have two defensive and two offensive uh, ants, I would do something like this. That guard general is going to die. So then from the guard general, I would run Dark Hercules and then Shield Warden and then Mimicry where I'm down. And now when the Shield Warden and Dark Hercules dies, I'd only heal one of them. So that way I get back to having a full march. But anyway, I hope that this video uh, helped you guys. I personally hate doing the underground maze. Um, it's one of the worst things in the game for me, but it's, it's necessary to do it to be able to get uh, your awakenings and such. But I hope this video was helpful, and we'll see you in the next one.